Young man, just what have you been up to? Me? Nothing. Oh, I see. Nothing. Didn't want to be late for tea. Why? What's so special about tea? Oh, come on, Grandad. You know, it's my birthday. What's in that? What's in what? Is that my present? Now, why should I be buying you a present? Oh, come on, Grandad. Stop teasing me. I said it's my birthday. You know it is. Birthday? Indeed. I'd quite forgotten. Oh, no, you hadn't. You never forget. Let me carry it. Go on. No. Oh, go on. I won't look. Well, it might be. All right, then rattle it. No, I will do no such thing. You must just wait until we get home. Oh, Grandpa. Go on, then. Open it. Gosh! Dad, look! A magnifying glass. Thank you, Grandad. It's smashing. It's all hairy. <laughs> Gosh! Yes, well, I wouldn't look too closely if I were you. Maybe he hasn't washed behind his ears. So, you like it? Here we are, then. And about time, too. Just you hush and turn out the light. Come on, that's terrific. And don't forget to make a wish. Happy, Happy birthday. 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 
Billy is now with our blessed Saviour in his heavenly kingdom. Tragedy. Such a young lad. The pain's worse for them still living. Come on, Betty. They were laughing and celebrating the lad's birthday. Diphtheria was part of it, they say. It was weak. He couldn't find the diphtheria when it came. Why? Why is such a thing happening to Billy? You must be brave, Mrs. Johnson. Let us therefore pray together. And not burden ourselves with fruitless questioning of the will of God. A lady at this hour. Who is it? It's Miss Watts. 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 Do I know her? Well, she is, sir. She is my own in the village, sir. May I show her in? Watts. Please sit down. I'll only be a moment, Mr. Finch. I have a message from your grandson. My grandson? Billy. Billy is dead. You have a grandson, and his name is Billy. I had, and that was his name, yes. I am a medium. I have a message for you from him. Very important, he says. Very important. Is it not enough for you, woman, that the poor child is dead? Why must I you... I am a medium, but my powers are limited. The message is unclear. You must go to one greater than I. I don't care what you are. I must ask you to leave. Don't you think there's already been enough grief over this terrible affair? Please go. Billy wants to tell you something. He wants to contact you. Please. He needs your help. Billy needs you. It's nonsense. No. The boy's dead. He can't speak to us. It's impossible. He can't. She heard him. He's not happy. We must find out why. Please. Please, in the name of God. Betty, can't you see? Betty. You want him to be alive. You want to believe this woman wants this... this spiritualist. When she tells us, we can still speak to him. There's no way. Science. Oh, science, science, always science. Do you think science has all the answers? Because if it has, I want to know why Billy had to die. Go on, tell me why. And what if science showed us he could speak to us? This is crazy. Put it out of your mind. Scientists deal in facts. I know. Like the scientists I've heard of in some society up in London. They check the facts when people ask them to. Ask them to what? To what it means when you're told that your dead grandson is trying to reach you. They don't laugh. They're men of science. Why don't you speak to them? Please. For me. For Billy. As I say, Mr. Thomas, I'm a man of science. I must be honest with you, I haven't much faith in this sort of thing. As a matter of fact, I'll go so far as to say that all this talk of life after death is nothing more than nonsense as far as I'm concerned. Dad, please. You could be right, Mr. Finch. You could be right. But as scientists, we show that, haven't we? And as men of science, 
we mustn't be afraid of using unorthodox methods. Mrs. Leonard's a most remarkable medium. Maybe she and her spirit guide, Fader, can contact Billy. Mrs. Leonard, are you ready? Yes, I'm quite comfortable, thank you. Fader, are you with us? Yes, I'm here. We need information from someone recently passed over. Two of the family are with me. Yes, yes we... we... See a young boy in the country. A fine view and trees and... And... Yes. Yes. A hat. Or... I don't know, it's... it's going... it's floating. Is there anyone with it? No, it's going, it's disappearing. <laughs> oh, the boy. He smiles at me. He smiles at... Is unhappy, troubled. What? But he says his name is Billy. Yes, Billy. What happened yesterday proved nothing. You could have told her everything before we got there. I'm sorry, I was talked into this. And that voice she put on, who she meant to be. I've told you, her guide, Fader. Mrs. Leonard is a very sensitive medium. Somehow, and we don't know how, she can communicate with those who have passed on from this life. To do that, she goes into a trance, as you saw last night. When she's like that, she can receive messages from the other side. Can she? But only from a guide who has passed on. In this case, Fader, who uses Mrs. Leonard to communicate. And don't forget, that was just our first sitting. Mrs. Leonard told me she senses something very urgent. Dangerous. With your permission, I should like to continue the sittings. And if I refuse my permission? It won't make any difference. We can't stop the messages coming through. Second sitting, November 18th, 1932. I have a... Strong feeling. Here. I feel it very strongly. Billy passed over with... with... Diphtheria. Yes. Yes, but... something else. Billy's trying to say something else caused his... his... Yes. Something else, more than the disease, behind it. What happened? Could I have a word? One word. Pipes. He says pipes. That word should be enough. Leave it like that. The view, a wonderful view. But you can't see it. It's locked. Fourth sitting, February 10, 1933. Billy says he's very pleased with our work, but he's puzzled we don't do more about the pipes. We can't. We need more help. Fader, can we get the name of a particular place? I'm getting a funny name. It sounds like Bentley and Stu. Stop? No. Something stop. Bentley and Stock. Billy's 
trying to make me see, to make me feel a town and a hill. Billy's going up the hill and I'm following him. He's disappeared. Sitting after sitting and still no apparent progress. The months are sliding past. Billy is growing more desperate. And Finch's silence underlines his disbelief. I'm... I'm... reaching the edge of despair. And those bloody pipes! Where are they? What do they mean? If only there was some way of breaking through. I must go and see Finch. This is what he must have meant by the word stock. And you still don't believe Mrs. Leonard's messages? Mr. Thomas, I'm sure you're very sincere in your efforts, but this business has gone on for months. Can't you let the dead rest in peace? I wish we could. Only sometimes they won't let us. During the last few weeks, Billy has often mentioned Bentley Street. Where exactly does that lead? It goes up past the church. Is that where Billy's buried? Well, yes. And after the church? Fades out into a track and, and then woods. Would you say there was a wonderful view? Some of it's quite... Just what are you getting at? Mr. Finch, would you have any objections if I were to bring Mrs. Leonard down here? All this interference. Why can't would you learn? Would your family have any objections? For Billy's sake. We'll see. Lovely country air. Are you sure the journey wasn't too tiring? Not at all. I enjoyed every minute of it. You're sure about the family? There was a certain reluctance, but yes, they've agreed to meet us. Here they are. I still don't like them. Is there any harm in it? I don't know. Is there any good? I'm not convinced. I feel Billy's presence very strongly. That's hardly surprising. Mrs. Leonard, do you need to go into a trance? No, that won't be necessary. I feel his... How is he... Betty. He must go into those woods. That's where the answer lies. Stay here. We want no part of this. Let them go. I'll wait here till the pumps arrive. Roger. So, how did it happen? These two pipes here. 
I traced them back to a natural spring. Natural over 200 years ago. Then this was a tiny village. The landlord built a canal to provide fresh water for the villagers. As the uh, place grew, so new sources were found. The canal was forgotten, started to rot, and began to drip poison into stagnant pools. Poison? Oh, yes. We've had the water analyzed. It's very contaminated. Anyone who drinks this will become severely ill and weakened. And if any uh, disease followed, well, I'm afraid, I'd say your lucky discovery probably saved quite a few lives. It wasn't worth it. <laughs> what else could it have been? No one knew the pipes were here, so nobody told you, did they?